from G Capo, man. Capo Vision TV, man. Before I get this video started, y'all gonna subscribe to the channel, press this like, press that like button, and comment on what's going on, man. Topic, man, right here is a prison story. I almost got jammed up and didn't make it home on like some gangbang activity, man. See, because down in the Tennessee Department of Corrections, they call that STG activity. I don't know what they call it in California, but that's what they call it down here in Tennessee, STG activity. I don't know if they call it STG in California because in that case, everybody will be an STG because California is gangland. But I don't know. Y'all could drop it in the comments for all my Cali people. But they call gang activity STG activity in the Tennessee Department of Corrections, man. So uh, I had to... It's back in about 2010, somewhere around that point, man. I had to um, take this drug program, you know, so I hit the compound, get to, um, you know, finally get into the drug program. Um, throughout the time, though, of me being in the drug program, I don't know what they call it, but I'm pretty sure... They got this everywhere. It's called RDAP. It's called Residential Drug Abuse Program. That's what it's called. And um, I heard they got it in the feds. I don't know. It might have a different name. I heard they got it a little bit of area where I think this is like state um, worldwide kind of or in the states. Uh, residential Drug Abuse Program. So I had to do that. So y'all know it was ups and downs with that because, you know, it's like they try to get you prepared to hop back out on the street. So they really test your patience a lot in the, um, in the RDAP program. And then, you know, at the same time, you in the program, but you still got to deal with the politics and the activities that's going on in prison. So just because you in the program don't mean you're not seeing the homies every day. Don't mean that you're not hearing the politics. Don't mean when your number is called that you don't have to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Certain homeboys respect you sitting back and doing the program, but it's other homeboys like, man, that man, that dude a sucker. He need to come out here on the compound and do what he got to do. You know what I'm saying? But I was one of them cats to where I handled both sides. I just kind of knew how to move smooth. If I had something to handle, I'd go handle my business, come back, get back to the program, and do what I got to do. So really... I kind of, you know, I programmed on in both areas for real. I did my drug program, but I also was going to get cracking if I had to get cracking, um, you know, throughout what was going on in prison, a regular prison life. So uh, there was this one officer, uh, I can't remember his name, but I know he was a sergeant, and he was well-known sergeant. He was the sergeant that was hard on gangs. He was hard on gang activities. Um, you know, if he sees some dudes huddled up, he finna come break it up. If he see you uh, giving a gang handshake, if he see you giving a gang handshake, he gonna write you up. Now, mind you, a gang write-up is a class A or a class B. Those are write-ups that prevent you from going home in prison. If you catch a class A, class B before you go for parole, you're not going home. You're getting put off for a year or two. Probably two years, though. We're going to be honest. So, you know, them them class A disciplinaries, they a bad, they a bad mug, if you know what I mean, though. That, that will prevent you from going home for a couple years. But he was always one of them dudes that was, you know, firm on the gang activity. Now, don't get me wrong. It's my time. You know, those months that I was in the program and I ran into him in certain situations, he was always respectful. He was just really like on man time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm one of them dudes I always show respect until I get disrespected. So he ain't never respect me. If I was walking the child late, some early in the morning, I see him, I tilt my head. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just one of them type of dudes. So, you know. When he had seen me, it got to the point to where he'll be like, you know what I'm saying, he'll nod his head because he knew that I was trying to move the right way. He knew who I was affiliated with and who I rock with, but he noticed that I was kind of just moving 
a little bit different. I didn't really move like a lot of the younger guys or a lot of the older guys who act like they was young. I was always kind of like a little bit ahead of my time. So I just moved a certain way. I wouldn't roll with a whole bunch of dudes. Might be me and one other homie. A lot of times I might be dolo because at the same time, I got my eyes on the prize. I'm trying to go to the house. So, um, uh, so as months go by, you know, I start getting deeper and deeper into the program, doing what I got to do, but it's getting time for me to, you know, get close to going home. So, you know, as it get close for you to time to go home, you know, times start getting a little bit hard. You start getting anxious. You start getting, sometimes you might get a little loose. And he caught me slipping one day, man. I'm talking about I'm literally probably finna go off for parole probably in two weeks. I'm knowing I complete the program, it's over with. I ain't been in no trouble. I ain't did nothing. I ain't been in no type of trouble. I've been moving right. So, man... One morning, I'm coming out for child. So usually, I'll be a little bit late coming to child, so I always used to be in like the last group. But this day, for some reason, um, this day, for some reason, I was with everybody. So boom, we slide out, they call child. We walking up to the child hall. We gotta walk up to here. And um, I see some homies. And I like that cool with cracking it up. I'm like, we chopping it up or whatever. So as soon as we meet up with each other, like face to face, you know, it's it, it's it, it's regular. It's you know, you pull up, he comes up, you know what I'm saying? The handshake, boom, keep it pushing. Lock the ends, whatever y'all do, whichever part of the states and stuff y'all on. Everybody do it a little bit different. Atlanta do it different. Tennessee, Cali, everybody do something a little bit different. But you always got the little handshake when you see the homies. So I'm not even thinking much. Boom, I run into a couple homies. What's up, homie? What's up, homie? What's up, homie? What's up? Boom, we keep going to child. All you hear across the yard is, hey. So I'm like, hey, who's that, cuz? Hey. So boom, we all turn like that. And it's the sergeant saying what I'm talking about. He like, all oh, you, come here. So we like, oh, man, you know me, I'm super spooked, bro. I'm finna go for parole. I'm, bro, I'm, man, I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm sick, because I already know what time it is. I'm sick, I already know what time it is. So we all walk up, I think it's about five or six of us. We all start walking up the hill towards us. Everybody, now mind you, two or three of us in the program. So, you know, we all walking up there. Some some dude got their head down there in the program. They know it's over. I'm sick. I'm just not showing it. I'm trying to go up here like I don't know what he's talking about, but I know exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about these greetings, all these handshakes, all this STG activity is what they were calling. So I'm like, man, what's going on? He like, man, you know what's going on. Give me your ID. So, boom, I'm like, dang, we do. So, everybody now in prison, this prison, I mean, it's really all the prisons down here. You got your ID. It's probably in all prisons. I don't know. I can't speak for no other state. But we all got ID tags with our name on it, um, um, correction number on there. So he like, give me your ID. So all of us take the ID off our shirts and give it to him. He said, all y'all getting rolled up. Gang activity. Y'all can go to child. So I'm like, dang. We get in the child. Now, mind you, about three or four of us in the program. We ain't eat hungry no more. <laughs> we is not hungry no more. We ain't going home. We know for a fact. We know for a fact that we done. Because dude firm, he don't just be pump faking. He be writing write-ups. Like, he ain't pump faking. He finna write that. So, boom, we getting in the, we getting in the child. Conversation ain't even the same no more. The other homies, they talking because they don't care. They ain't in the program. This just regular penitentiary life. We trying to stay normal, me and the other couple homies. 
who in the program, but we can't be normal. We sick. We was this close to going home. We know it's over. So, boom. Child stuff, we eat, you know what I'm saying, 15, 20 minutes, bro. We eat, right? So, we coming up out of there. So, usually, you know, they'll be out there to get my IDs and just write the information down, write us up later. So, when we come out and look for him, he ain't even there. So, we like, forget it. We'll walk to the pod. They'll get us our IDs. They'll probably bring us our IDs with the write-ups. That's what we saying. So, everybody, boom, sick. So, boom. We go back in the pod, me and the homies and stuff. The ones who got jammed up doing the handshake. So we like, dang, bro, we done jacked our program off. That's what they call it when you mess your program off. Because not only is we finna get a write-up, we finna get kicked out of the program for gang activity. So we end up talking about it. Count time come, like 3 o'clock count. We end up for count, you know what I'm saying? Really, at this time, we just rating on the write-ups. I'm here watching Judge Judy. I'm sick. So, boom. Um, um, when when count time finna be up, they call some names. Call my name, the couple other homies' name. Boom. Sergeant such and such want to see y'all at the bubble. We like, dang, here go the write-ups, here go our IDs back. So we all three of us walk up there. I ain't going to count. I'm sad. Our heads down and everything. I'm going to keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? Not going home after doing four, five years. You sick. So, boom, we walking up there. We taking a walk of shame. We hit the upstairs. We going up there to the office. So he said, uh, he said, Man, I ain't even going to write y'all up, bro. He said, y'all playing, though. But I'm not going to take y'all away from going home to y'all family. But y'all need to watch exactly what y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? Because you could have jacked off your whole parole, your whole program, over some minor stuff that ain't even nothing. And I think that was his name, too, Huffman, now that I think about it. Uh, his name was Huffman. He was like, y'all can go on back to y'all pods. When I tell y'all, bro, we was so happy. We was super happy, man. Like, I'm talking about we dodged a bullet right then, man. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy, but, man, we ended up making it home, though. But he spared us that time. Told y'all he really just stand on man business, man. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Press that like button. Comment on what's going on, man. Seven G.